So Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together to study your word in detail. We thank you for Denny and his leadership. And we ask that you would open, help each of us to open our hearts and our minds that we would get the message that you want us to hear today and then help us to apply it to our own lives so that we might draw closer to you and be of better service for the growing of your ministry. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to look at the first, uh, we're going to read the first eight verses, uh, Mark 7. Uh, we're going to do 1 through 8, and then we're going to jump over to 14 and 15, and then we'll finish up with uh, 21 through 23. But I want to look at just uh, the first eight verses. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the, to the traditions of men. Okay. Is there anything that in these verses that really jumps out at you? First eight. Just the idea of traditions. Just the idea of traditions getting in the way of what's really important. Um, we we get a even even in churches, you know. We have to do this because it represents this and this and this and or, or look at you know our neighbor church um daryl he he's he's adapting with the times he said he feels like he reaches out to people when he dresses more casually mm -hmm. that's more important than the tradition of how you dress and things like that that, that stood out for me I, I think about this and maybe because of next week's lesson but to me, that's, this is a lot where we're at in a lot of ways. I think people nowadays, I think it's so easy to, well, okay, I haven't committed murder, haven't committed adultery, cool, I'm good. Um, and just, just like what this says, we're more about some of the big traditional things and are we really serving? Are we really growing our spiritual condition? I, I think in so many instances, where where someone a long time ago told me that I was playing <coughs> at church and not really living it. That was you were what playing church? Oh, playing. Okay. That's when I, was, I have difficulty with math sometimes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I <laughs> With my hearing, sometimes I have to kind of read the yep. read your yep. lips and I along hear. with your. When I was first introduced <coughs> to the church in my twenties, um, you know, I went got saved, but I didn't really take it all that serious, and I just think that this speaks to my heart as to where we are in today's world. I, I totally agree, and that was, was my first question was about, you know, um, and Casey jumped right on it, you know, what traditions do we have that, that keeps us from the kingdom of God? And I remember, um, I guess for me, the very first, the biggest one at Flower Creek was 
um, for as long as I can remember, the elders and the deacons, and we had two elders and four deacons at that time, two on each side, and they would process in in the very beginning of the church. And they would sit on the front pew, and we had communion about in the middle of the service like it is uh, here at Butler. And then there become a movement that if we thought it was more important for those deacons and elders to, to worship with their family. So we moved um, communion to the end of the service. And then we would, they would, the deacons and elders would gather and come, come forward and then serve. So for tradition, that was a big move uh, because you, you not only you moved <clears throat> what some feel is the most important part of the service and communion from the middle to the end, but you also made it less formal, uh, to Casey's uh, thinking with, along with Daryl. Um, I didn't have a problem either way, but just, you know, watching it happen, um, I can see both points to that. Um, I understand that you come to, to worship together as a church. Uh, you you miss that first half or so of the uh, of the uh, service the way it was. What is there is there any traditions? And I tried to think of traditions here, and, and the only really thing that, and Casey brought it up was is dress. Um, that when we came in oh three oh four, <clears throat> every man had a suit and tie on uh, that I could remember. Uh, when we came and you know it's slowly gone away that just basically the elders uh, are the only ones that have a suit and tie not all of those um, I don't have a problem with that uh, I want to see people in church regardless of what they wear you know as long and I don't know of anybody that's not wearing appropriate clothes to church um, so is there any other traditions that, that get in the way? I mean, you know, where Mark writes today, um, the disciples and Jesus was on the move so much. And maybe they didn't have the opportunity to wash their hands. They didn't have a place to wash their hands. I know they talked about going through grain fields and picking them as, you know, what they were eating as they went through the fields. Um, and then Jesus is, is in the middle of a shift here. Uh, if you know, if you, you background this, in the middle of a shift of doing away with all of uh, the Jewish law, basically, uh, that gets in the way of, of um, furthering the kingdom. I think what, the, the TVs and the switch to the music on the screen and all was a big switch mm, for this that was. church. I mean, people didn't want to give up the hymnals and thought that, you know, you weren't going to preach, we were going to watch it on TV, and I think that was a big change, but it was... It was an uncertain change when it was happening, wasn't it? Yeah. See, I forgot all about that. I've become so used to that. Yeah. Some of them like to sing from the hymnals. They're still right there. They're well welcome. Carmelie mm -hmm. looks out of hers That's, every week. That's in case we have a like last Sunday. I don't know what happened. I love it. No, I think what was added to the a chorus was left out. It Something. Was, yeah. It went right from verse to verse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something, Denny, that really a tradition. I think. Sometimes people interpret the Bible different, but sometimes I think they confuse traditions for, what am I trying to say, for, for the Christian view of things. So I'm trying to think of an example. For, I loved my church growing up, but there was one thing that really rubbed me the wrong way and, and I think left a bad impression was I kind of grew up thinking women were less than. Mm, women, okay. couldn't, women couldn't and, serve. And that's, that's very typical in mm -hmm. certain types of churches, most definitely. And I didn't realize how damaging that was until later in life, and I real, finally realized, like, no, they're, they we're not less than, because we can't, you know, because they had the tradition of 
only men can be elders and serve in the church and all this mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, and and I feel like that is a tradition, not necessary. And, and and again, you have to put the Bible in context that it was kind of like that that way back then, but doesn't make it right. That's you know what I mean. Like, because you have to study why it was that way. It was because the women at that time was not educated. They right. are today. We're talking about two totally different. Mm-hmm. And, and there was some educated women. Lydia was, was a disciple uh, and followed Jesus to the very end and was one, was an apost- one of the apostles. Um, but I totally get it. And, and yeah. the thing that bugged me mostly about that was is they would, they would let the women teach Sunday school, which is the most important thing, <laughs> but then they wouldn't let them serve in a leadership role. Well, they were already serving a leadership role in the church by teaching the children. Mm-hmm. Because that's the most, I mean, you you mold those children from the very beginning. Uh, and I'm sure it was it was that way. There you, there was there was female teachers, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. Sure. And in every case that I've ever seen, there always was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, yeah, it's yeah. two ways there that it's, um, that they're, you know, and I think that's the most important part of, of churches is, is Sunday school and teaching the children so they can they have a a foundation upon when somebody questions their uh, Christianity then they have a foundation to to stand on uh, anything else anybody else got anything on as far as traditions uh, traditions go so what about let's look at verse six there and that's the one that's uh, shrunk down for us that when he quotes Isaiah and and I'm going to read um, I'm going to read basically this um, these this people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me in vain do they worship me teaching human precepts as doctrines what's your thoughts about <clears throat> As he's throwing this back to the Pharisees. I don't see, and I'm going to use the word, I don't see people standing on a soapbox looking down at others here. uh, Like he's more or less servicing with your lips. I don't see that so much here as that I, but I had seen it in other places. Um, but their hearts are far from me. Um, I don't know of any e- people that have that type of an ego. That kind of is what makes me think um, of that. Someone that has, I think, other all, than me. I think we all. <laughs> We all might be guilty to an extent because um, every every Sunday we get a routine. We show up, we sing this song, we do this. But are we doing our internal job of trying to get the message from it? You know, or are we just going through the motions? Or uh, that's what this makes me think of. <clears throat> You know, our, it's you tradition, can, it's a routine, we do this, but our, what are we getting out of it? And you can get in a rut. Yeah. Uh, as Randy called it, playing church, as someone told, you know, um, it's easy to play church. You know, go through the... Mm-hmm. I've always thought if, if uh, April Fool's ever fell on a Sunday, I thought about doing worship in reverse. Starting from the end and working to the front, so we have the benediction first and work in reverse order. But Sheila shaking her head. I think crazy. Why does it? Why does it have to be April Fool's? Why couldn't you do that on any Sunday? You could. You could. I, I just thought it would be, you know, kind of funny. Get the point across. Um, yeah. I know it helps me when I'm planning a special music. I'll bug Denny. I'll say, what's your sermon about? You know, mm-hmm. I read the scripture. What are you focusing on on it? Because I like to tie it all together. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not successful at it, but uh, but I think it, help, it helps me anyway to have everything kind of tied in 
and I'm on one mindset here. To me, this this means a lot. Are they are you're talking about the the roteness of the service? But to me, this is more like: Are we coming here on Sunday to look good, or are we living this during the week? When every person leaves here, what do they do during the week to live their Christian right. life? Mm -hmm. It's like is our spirituality in our heart? Yeah, and mm -hmm. something that is important to us that we spend time through the week focusing on, or do we come to Sunday? Check. Okay, I'm done. Woof. Right. I'll see you next Sunday. One hour. Right. Checked in. I've checked out. And back then, I know yeah. Brian was telling me, and I studied theaters, and I knew it was the same way. Like when you go to a play or something, they, church was the same way. It was a social thing. You want it to be seen. And it was sort of a social thing, not necessarily, you know, that's what people used it for. And so it might not necessarily have been on their hearts. Yeah. I mean, you used to see past presidents, they would show them coming out of a church. Not so much anymore, but it, there was a time when <clears throat> powerful people used church as, as that social, see, I'm religious, I go to church. And yeah. you don't see that so much anymore uh, as you used to. And I don't have a thing wrong with good hygiene, and that's basically all this, you know, mm -hmm. the washing of the pots and, the, you know, the washing of your hands. That, that's all good hygiene. But Jesus here has seen it as it is more important than doing the work of God, is, is the, pro, the rub he has here uh, with it. Anything else before we move on to... To the other two readings. Anybody one, else? One thing that I'd like to mention, I don't know how this fits, but it's stuck in my head when we were talking about human, our own isms. There are st still people, well, and maybe more than, but anyhow, some people believe that if you've been divorced and your husband or wife didn't commit adultery, you're not going to heaven. <clears throat> I don't think I saw that in the Bible. I think I've seen scriptures that say, if you ask to be forgiven, God will forgive you. So I think that's a human personal belief that some people share. And I, I will tell you, it can do a number on somebody that's been divorced. I, I know of an example in our church where somebody is really struggling with that so it's a shame i think it's usually safe to say not one sin is going to keep you you do this one thing you're automatically going to hell i don't think it works that way i think if you believe just break it down to the basics mm -hmm. do you believe and what's on your heart but you did this one thing in the past that's it i don't that doesn't sit right with me the way, I, the way I understand it, there is one sin that will not be forgiven. Mm -hmm. That's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Um, I think that's so quotes it in there. Yeah, um, but everything else can be forgiven, and including divorce. I mean, so and I'm not condoning divorce. I, I no. you know, I just, yeah. I is just divorce a sin. See, that's that's what some people think. Yeah. If that was a, that was the Jewish law. That was one way to be deemed clean, if, if or to have it. Um, if that was the situation, okay. If it was emotional it, abuse, physical abuse, hey, you made your bed, you got to lay in it. Yeah, you're stuck. But if if your spouse cheated on you, then okay, that that is grounds for divorce. And that's the only grounds that there were at that time. Yeah. We don't live in we don't live by the rules of the Old Testament, or we would all be dimmed to hell. Uh, without the grace and the forgiving of Jesus Christ, you know we wouldn't have a chance. Um, so yeah, no, it. it marriage. Divorce is like a plays no promise. That's what. Well, marriage is like a promise, so maybe they mm -hmm. see that as breaking that promise. But, but I think everybody's personal situation is. You can't have one rule for everybody. Like, you know what I mean? I feel mm -hmm. like everybody's 
It's, it's, promise, it's a promise between two, two humans, not between God and a human. It's blessed by God. The marriage is blessed by God if, it's, if the ceremony is done correctly. But it's between two, it, it boils down, it's between two humans, and sometimes two humans just can't get along. And it's better if they do divorce than to try to stay together for you know, the sanctity of, of whatever. Anything, anybody got anything else on that? I don't have any problems with divorce at all. Um, as long as it's well thought out and not rushed up, you know, like you try, and sure. then sometimes it just, you try everything you can long enough. It just doesn't work out. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to read, uh, or have someone read 14 and 15 and 21 through 23. We're going to read all those together. Does anybody want to? Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Okay, let's look at just 14 and 15 first. Let's, let's take a look at those. <clears throat> Of uh, especially 15, there is nothing outside a person by going in can defile that the things that come out are what defile. So basically in 15, he is he has begun to uh, set steps away of getting away from the food law. He, he's basically saying no matter what you eat or, or in what manner that you eat it by not washing your hands will defile a person. But it's the things that come out first is what that defiles you. What comes out is from the heart. The heart, the yeah, the intangible spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. And that's what that I mean. There's nothing, and there's nothing anyone can say or do to you that's going to to change or defile you. But how you react to that and what comes out of you in response to that. That's a good way of looking that's at a it. Great point. Yep. Good way of looking at it. I like that. Yeah. You know, you should not let that bother you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 th I think even in the confines of our church, somebody may feel different than I do about whatever. They come to me, Randy, I disagree with you about this or how you handled that. Here's what I think you should have done. I have a choice. Well, thank you. I appreciate that advice. I'll I'll think about it next time. Or, what are you talking about? You have no right to talk to me that way. You know, and then it's like, you know, that person's a real nuthead. Because they don't think the same way I think. Yeah. And they're yeah. calling me out. So how yeah. we react to it, yeah, I, I think that's a great way of looking at it. But words do hurt. I mean, there's no getting around those that uh, if they're aimed sharply at you or maybe more importantly, if they're talked about around your back and you hear about them, it's second nature. Um, but again, you know, going back to the very beginning, is, is that furthering the kingdom of heaven if you let that get between you and, and God? It's not. I look at it, um, the rest of the second half of 14 and 15 is that 
that Jesus is trying to to simplify being a Christian uh, as opposed to the way the Jewish law and, and traditions are are uh, written here is that you know he's saying yeah being a Christian can be hard but it it doesn't have to be that difficult if you see a piece of food and you know you want to eat it you know you don't have to go five miles to wash your hands or or, or whatever uh, go ahead and eat it Jesus is making it more accessible to people that might not come otherwise because of all these little nitpicky things get in the way that might be intimidating which we can apply this today like what are we doing that's keeping others intimidated you know and wanting to like oh that's that's not me that you know I think he's simplifying it in that way yeah. making it more accessible right the 21 and 23 <clears throat> speaks more about the heart or the decision that um, than more about the law. That you know things are morally wrong, but are they? Is your heart in the right place, or is it not in the right place? Is he in 23 or 22 as he speaks about all the things like Randy talked about in the very beginning? You know. Haven't killed anybody this week, and um, you know, I haven't really slandered anybody. I'm good. I'm good. I like how this is um, almost the opposite. You know, I've been talking the last couple of weeks about this idea of defense versus offense. Like, mm -hmm. whatever I taught on about the armor of God, talked about righteousness and. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, the armor the, of God, yeah. You know, all the other stuff, and then this is almost like the opposite. So you can look at it two different ways. Randy said, "Oh, I haven't stole or committed adultery, or you know, um, um, I haven't murdered anyone, so I'm good." But you can also look at it as, "Have I been righteous? Have I been, um, you know, saying nice things or whatever? Have, have I been kind?" You can, whatever works best for you, you can look at it two different ways with that. And then today, James will look at it from that other point of view. Uh, even though these scriptures were chose because they had things in common, it's the slant of the writer of of what viewpoint they take. Uh, whether they, you know, whether they take it from, um, you know, the defensive side or the offensive side, uh, the positive or the negative side. So. You know, today we're going to be talking about listening and hearing and doing and, and things like that. Um, as opposed to, you know, is it okay not to wash your hands? Or is it okay that if, you know, if we don't, if we don't do all of these things, are we still righteous in 22? Um, so, yeah, it, it's all on the point of the view of the writer. Of, uh, I, I think that... Um, in a lot of ways, what it speaks to here, don't do these things. Okay? And I, I put that into perspective as today's times. Okay? I went to church on Sunday. I spent my hour. Check. I didn't murder, didn't do adultery, didn't do this, didn't do this. Okay? But what did you do? Did you spend time praying? Did you spend time reading the Bible? Did you spend time in an attitude of worship? Did we do something that would grow our relationship with God? To me, that's the hard part. Because it's 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 relatively easy to get here on and Sunday and spend time with really good people for an hour and then feel okay, hey, you know, this is great. Look, I'm doing great. I didn't do anything bad, but did I yeah. do anything good? And, and, and that's, I, I agree, and, and one of the Sunday school lessons I did was about playing defense. I think that's important. Yeah. But like so many things in life, I think the offense part is, in my opinion, maybe more important, or at least as important, because just not doing the wrong things you know I, I came to church i hunkered down i didn't do anything else i stayed at home or 
that's not what makes us a strong Christian. It's what we actually do. Mm-hmm. Next, next Sunday's um, message. Faith without works. We all know what that is. Right. So we're, I mean, we have to do. I apologize. Getting an early start on preaching. And I, I do a poor, I do a better job of, of talking about the glass being half full than sometimes talking about the glass being half empty. And that's, I think that's my personality. Uh, but sometimes you have to talk about the half empty part, or why it's half empty as opposed to why it's half full. Um, if you know, if you get my drift on that. Daniel, will you close this today? Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Father. Thank you for this message that Danny gave us today. Uh, let us let us grow close to you, Lord, and um, continue to watch over all of us and just make them good. Thank you for the message, and please continue that to grow closer to Jesus.